In this video, you'll learn how to calculate free fall problems. In this question, it says a rock is dropped. What is the rock speed after three seconds? Since we know that in free fall, the acceleration is 10, about 10 meters per second squared in the down direction, um, we can just uh, mentally calculate this one. So let's say here's my time and here's my velocity. So that's zero one, two, three seconds. And what 10 meters per second uh, squared means is that every second the velocity changes by 10 meters per second. So we start with zero meters per second and in one second it's gonna be 10 meters per second. Two seconds can be 20 meters per second. Three seconds will be 30 meters per second. And so at three seconds, at three seconds, um, the velocity will be 30 meters per second down, the speed will be 30 meters per second. The next question is how far did the rock travel? For this one, I'm going to create my variables chart. So, but instead of delta x, I'm going to use delta y because now the object is moving in the y directions. It's going down. So it's in the up down axis, which we're going to refer to as y axis. So delta y, vi, vf, a, t. All right, so we're going to try to fill this out here. Um, so what do we know? First of all, for free fall problems, we always know that the acceleration is going to be 10 meters per second squared. And um, we're going to think about whether or not it's going to be positive or negative. So if you make up a positive, then the acceleration for free fall will be negative. If you make down positive, uh, which is what I will do, I'm going to make down positive since the acceleration is down, so I don't need it, so it's just gonna be a positive 10 meters per second squared. I wanna know how far, so that's my question mark there. I know I'm dropping it, um, so the initial velocity is zero. I also know that I'm dropping it for three seconds, so it travels for three seconds. So now I'm gonna go and look at my um, chart. I'm gonna look for the one that doesn't have VF, and that's gonna be this one right here. And so I'm going to use, um, I'm going to go down here and find the one that I'm, it's going to be uh, the second, the second one, which is delta x equals vit plus 1 over 2 at squared. Since we're dealing in the y-axis, I'm going to write this as delta y equals vit plus 1 over 2 at squared. Okay, so vi is zero, um, so this whole thing is gonna be zero plus one over two. The acceleration is gonna be a positive 10 um, meters per second squared in the downward direction because we made down positive. Uh, the time is three seconds and that's gonna be squared. So uh, three squared is nine, uh, nine, uh, nine, and then we have 10 divided by two is five, so nine times five, we get 45 meters. So this rock, after three seconds, uh, will fall uh, 45 meters. Now let's take a look at another problem. And this one's a little bit different because in this problem, we're actually throwing um, something into the air. And we're shooting an arrow up into the air. Uh, it says an arrow is shot into the air at 62 meters per second. Uh, what is the peak height? Uh, so once again, I'm going to start with my uh, variables chart, delta y, vi, vf, a and T. And once again, for free fall, we know that the acceleration is going to be 10 meters per second squared. The question is, is it positive or is it negative? Um, in this problem, I'm going to make um, up positive and it's arbitrary. You can do it either way as long as you're consistent um, in, in, in using that throughout your whole problem. So if up is positive and acceleration is downward, then the acceleration is going to be negative. So we have a negative acceleration here. Um, I'm shooting into the air, so it does have initial velocity, which is going to be 62 meters per second. Um, they want to know what is the peak height. What is the peak height? Um, and we also know that at the peak height, the velocity will be zero, um, because at the highest point, for an instant, uh, it's not moving. Okay, so looking at this, um, I can see that I need to find an equation uh, that doesn't have t. If I look in my chart um, over here, I can see that 
of that equation uh, would be the it would be the third one which is vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x so i'll go ahead and write that down vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta and then we're doing we're we're, we're working vertically here the y-axis so i'll write delta y so vf squared is zero um, vi is uh, 62 and that's going to be squared plus 2 times a is negative 10 and delta y so you have 0 equals 62 squared get 3844 2 times negative 10 is going to be minus 5 uh, 2 times 10 is 5 times delta y so I need to um, uh, move the 384 to the left. So I'm going to add, I'm going to subtract 384 on both sides. The negatives will cancel out. I'm going to divide 5 on both sides. And that leaves me with delta y is equal to 192 meters. Uh, so at the, the peak height for measured as measured from the ground uh, will be 192 meters. Now they want to know how long does it take the arrow to go up and come back down. Uh, so uh, for this question, I know that um, uh, I'm going to first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first find the time to, to get to the peak height, and then I'm going to take that, and then I'm going to double the time. Okay, so what that means is it's going to go from here to the highest point and come back down. Uh, so I'm going to just measure the time to go from, uh, let's say if I call this A, B, and C, I'm going to measure the time, the time for from A to B, okay, and then I'm going to take that times and I'm going to multiply it by 2. So the time for the time for A to C is just going to be double the time from A to B, okay, so it's just going to be double that time. So the time from A to B, we can use this equation VF equals VI plus AT. Okay, and you could probably do this mental math, um, but uh, let's just go from, this is going to be from A to B, it's going to be 0, the initial is 62, um, the acceleration is a negative 10 times T, I move the 62 over, uh, which gives me 10T, the negatives will cancel out, so T is just 62 divided by 10, which is 6.2 seconds, so this is the time from A to B, okay, so to find the time from A, B to C, it's just going to be uh, double. It's going to be 2 times 6.2, uh, which we get 12.4 seconds. Now, I'd like to um, show you kind of a little pattern here with free fall objects. So let's say we have a rock and we drop it, drop it down. It's dropping, dropping, dropping down. As it falls, it's going faster. And you're going to notice that the, uh, the rocks are getting farther and farther and farther apart so it starts up here and it's getting farther and farther apart and let's say these represent um, one second intervals so there's one seconds there's two seconds and there's three seconds so these are falling these are one second intervals as it's falling I want to uh, create a little uh, data table here and come up with a um, see if we can come up with some sort of pattern here so let's say this is time, and this is the velocity, and this is the uh, distance at a vertical distance. We'll, we'll, we'll label this as delta y, um, how far it fa falls. Actually, we could just call it y. So what is the position? What is it, the position after a certain amount of time? All right, so this will be in seconds, meters per second, and this will be in meters. Okay. So at zero, zero seconds, one, two, uh, that's three, four, five, six. Okay, see if we can come up with a pattern. So because we know that the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared, that means every second the velocity changes by 10 meters per second. So if we were to drop this one second later, it would be 10, two seconds, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So if you ever want to know what is the speed or the velocity of an object after a certain amount of time when it's dropped, 
all you just do is multiply by 10. Um, the next part is the uh, the displacement. How far did it fall down? So for this one, um, we can use this equation, um, which we used in the previous question. Uh, delta y equals bit plus 1 over 2 at squared. And uh, we know that the initial velocity for something dropped is 0, so plus 1 over 2. And a is going to be 10, so I'm going to go put 10 there, and t squared. So half times 10 is 5 t squared, which tells us that the displacement is just going to be uh, increasing by a multiple of the time, okay, times 5. So let's uh, take a look at um, our problem here. So at 0 seconds, um, it starts at 0. One second later, we're going to plug 1 squared is 1. 1 times 5 is 5, okay. Uh, 2, we're going to plug 2 in here um, into the time. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. 3. Uh, 3 squared is 9, 9 times 5 is 45, uh, 4 squared is 16, 16 times 5 is 80, 5 squared 25 times 5 is 125, and 6 squared is 36 times 5 is 180. Okay, so we can um, really quickly uh, calculate how far something is falling. I just wanted to show you this uh, this this table here and then kind of work it through um, to hopefully you can kind of see a pattern uh, for for this uh, situation where you're dropping a ball um, what is the velocity after a certain amount of seconds um, how far did it fall after a certain amount of seconds